Darren Williams is inexplicable and inexcusable. I don't give a damn what's going on. You can't go zero. You can't register a zero in points if you're Darren Williams. They called him Casper the Friendly Ghost. That's what they said, Ryan. I didn't say this. They said it. Inexcusable. I want to go far. There's no stopping. I see them watching. I see them waiting. One day I swear I'm going to be on the station. Mama, I got to make it. Darren Williams used to be the best point guard in the NBA, and if not, he was second to maybe Steve Nash or Chris Paul. In his first four to five seasons, he was on track to about a Hall of Fame career. I mean, in his prime from 2007 to 2011, he averaged about 20 points and 10 assists per game, which is basically on pace to a Hall of Fame career. I mean, his stats were great in his prime. His stats were amazing. He was on pace for a Hall of Fame career, but if you look at this previous NBA Finals, he was terrible. He couldn't make a shot. He was in terrible shape. He was 2 for 16 from the entire NBA Finals, 1 for 9 from deep. And defensively, I honestly believe he would have struggled guarding me, and I don't even play basketball anymore. His own teammate and what I thought to be his close friend on the team, Richard Jefferson, was honest, and he said, when Darren Williams came into the games, the Warriors, their eyes lit up, basically saying that a guy that's not too long removed out of his prime was that much of a liability. I mean, even the Warriors bench, I'm sure their eyes lit up when they saw Darren Williams. So the question for this video is, I'm continuing the series of what the hell happened to these superstar players. What the hell happened to Darren Williams' superstar career? Well, let me take you back to 2012, about five years ago. Remember that great USA Olympic team that won it all, you know, with LeBron, Carmelo, KD, Kobe, Anthony Davis as a rookie, Tyson Chandler. I don't know how the hell he was. I guess Dwight Howard wasn't there at the time. I don't know. But you remember that team? Darren Williams was also on that team, and he weighed as much as 220 pounds, about 10 to 15 pounds over his ideal weight. Basically, he came into the USA camp overweight, which seems to be the start of the decline of Darren Williams' career, in my opinion. And one person involved with Team USA in 2012 described him as moody, somewhat like a Kobe Bryant. But, you know, Kobe Bryant is Kobe Bryant. He has five championships. Darren, I mean, he doesn't have the right to be moody like Kobe. So he basically came into the USA team overweight, and it kind of transferred into his season with the Nets in 2012. And he had an excuse for everything. At first, he was mad about the offensive system with the Nets not being ran consistently like it was in Utah when he was with Jerry Sloan. Then he had about one legitimate excuse with the Nets, basically complaining about their consistent coaching changes. They changed their coaches way too many times and he had a problem with that which was legitimate in my opinion but then he started complaining about his ankles and which i attribute to his weight but in 2015 he ran out of excuses when he played against atlanta in the playoffs listen closely in game two and game three of that series versus atlanta in the first round darren williams put up a combined five points in two games L listen to what i'm saying he had five points the star player he had five points in two games in the playoffs. Absolutely no excuse to put up five points from, from anybody, not just your star player, but from anybody. But then in game four, after hearing all the criticism from people like Stephen A. Smith in my intro of this video, he finally stepped it up and put up a respectable 35 points and tied the series at two games apiece. But then in game five, he put up five points once again, and they ended up losing in just six games to Atlanta. He literally proved Paul Pierce completely right in that series. After Paul Pierce left for Washington after being with the Nets, he basically said, man, before I got there, he thought Darren Williams was an MVP candidate, but he said once he got there, that's not what Darren wanted. He just, he just didn't want it, man. He thinks sometimes the pressure got to him, man. That's what it seemed to be. Now, being fair to Darren Williams, he did suffer a lot of injuries in his career, as most players do who declined that dramatically like Darren Williams did. He did suffer some injuries, but, you know, I think a lot of those ankle injuries were attributed to his extra weight that he carried, and he played through a lot of those injuries, but he was way slower, and Darren Williams in his prime, he wasn't the fastest, but he was quick and precise with all of his moves. Imagine if, during the prime of his career, Darren was committed to keeping his body in shape like maybe even his rival Chris Paul did. 
I mean, at 33 years old, he may have something left in the tank, but he just didn't do that. Also, I believe the bright lights of New York really hurt his career. I mean, you have to look at it. During his prime, Darren Williams thrived in a very small market in Utah, and then he moved to the Nets, who just, you know, relocated to Brooklyn with Jay-Z and all this stuff, and basically all the expectations were placed on his shoulders, and really his shoulders only when he first got traded to the Nets, and again, that was just a lot of pressure on a guy like Darren Williams, who seems to not handle that the best. I mean, when the Nets formed that big five with Paul Pierce, Kevin Garnett, Brooke Lopez, Joe Johnson, Darren Williams, Jason Terry off the bench, the expectations rose to the roof. The, I mean, the, the expectations were clearly to dethrone the Miami Heat and win the NBA Finals. It was championship or bust. Remember all the picks the Nets gave up to get Kevin Garnett and Paul Pierce and Jason Terry. I mean, they gave up a lot, and they're still suffering to this day. So the expectations were clearly championship or bust, and Darren Williams just couldn't live up to it. So, you know, that's just my opinion. That's my take on what I really think happened to Darren Williams' career. Once again, I think the lights of New York really got to him. I don't think he was the type of player that really can thrive in a you know a city like Los Angeles or uh, you know New York stuff like that. He just wasn't that type of player like Kobe, uh, Shaq. You know, so he really struggled and you know it really got to his career. Also, he was overweight towards the stretch of his career and that really hurt him as well. If you guys like this video, like the video. If you guys like the what happened to these superstar player series make sure you guys let me know in the comments i had a lot of people ask me to do this video so i had to analyze his career and tell you guys what i thought of his career if you like the video like the video if you guys are excited for the nfl season these videos will be coming out soon all this great stuff that's coming up nba season soon Kyrie Irving on the so Kyrie Irving i don't i don't even know man make sure you guys stay tuned for these upcoming videos man i love you guys make sure you guys you know like comment subscribe do all that great stuff guys and until next time Stay tuned. Fresh your Oh, 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 oh. She wanna rock with the man. She wanna hop in the limb. Rock with the band. She wanna rock with the gang. Oh, pop a little band. Oh, I got more bands than your man. Started from pots and pans to all of the fans and all of the hoes in my pants. Oh, oh, I walk in that bed, I don't dance. Oh, 